Welcome back, baseball fans, to the Winter Baseball Classic. We are moving into the fourth round today. We're down to eight teams that are left. The four teams that won the first two rounds, round of seven and the winner's bracket, round of five, and then the four remaining teams who survived a best of three elimination. Just a quick look at that bracket before we start here. Um, we are in this area here, fourth round, and in this bracket, the number one seed is Rhode Island, who's only lost once in the tournament thus far. And then uh, number two seed is the West Regional's Missoula team with seven and two. Athens, number three. Tucson, at number four. Uh, the toughest matchup will be right here, as number five, Savannah, brings an eight and four record into Tucson. Meanwhile, all the other seeds are the lowest seeds possible. Uh, 11, 10, and 9, and they all bring 500 records or a game above. So, in this round, when you factor in the overall one loss record, the uh, seeded teams are in great shape to advance again, as the opponents are going to need to win not just 3 of 5, they're going to need to win 4 out of 5 in this case, or 4 out of 6 in these cases. Anyway, um, we're starting today with the number 10 Seattle with a 6-6 six six record against number 1 Rhode Island. Um, they need to win 4 out of 5. And if they win 4 out of 5, of course, they would have a 3 over 500 record and this team would have a uh, 3 over 500 record as well, but lose the head-to-head -head tiebreaker there. Unfortunately, we played game 1 and Rhode Island rolled them and so now they're four games back with the four games, the four possible games left. They have to win all four. So it's not looking good for the Seattle team flying into Rhode Island. Watch those mountains there. Um, SeaTac will send um, Joe Coleman to the hill. We saw him last time out. The ace and anchor of the SeaTac squad. Against number two starter, Mike Kilkenny. Good uh, to get a good idea to see what this guy's got as uh, it's this is his fourth and final attempt to get into the summer league with this card. It's a pretty good card and he's a starter seven left-hander so I fully expect him to get into the league. Let's just see how he performs well in this tournament. Leading off, we're gonna switch from Booker to these guys. There we go. Alright, gets things started here. Rick Rennick Leads it off with a single one and two line out. Kessinger, two nines, a double. West Parker, 66, short. Short stop is Fregosi, who's a two. And McMullen, 67, is a K. Bottom of one. Tommy Harper, 62, center. McCullough, 510, short X, their short stop. It's Kessinger, also a two. That's a base hit, a cheap single off of Kessinger's glove. Bobby Tolan of the Bells, 4 6 3 double play. Ken Henderson in the second inning, 59. Homer 1 a 3, fly ball, and he missed it. It's the fly ball. Chalk one up for Kilkenny. 5 5 is a walk. Joe Rudy, short X. Again, this is for Gosey, is a 2 e 21, and that is a 6 4 3 double play. Well, it seems that um, Rhode Island has the more talented squad. That Joe Rudy card you just saw hit 189. You got 215 hitting Al Weiss in the lineup, 245 Rennick, and uh, yeah, it's a really Really bad guys on SeaTac when you take a closer look at them. Uh, Fregosi leads off. He's having a great tournament thus far. He rolls a short. Yastrzemski first, and you're like, well, why is Yastrzemski playing in this, you know, tournament? It's because his 1970 card is already in the summer league, so we have a 69 card here to give uh, to give a little bit of punch to these teams. Willie Smith, 68, single 118 is a base hit. 
and Bill Freehand K's. We go to the third, Meterwald, 311. Is a hit by pitch. Al Weiss, 2 7 is a K. Rich Rennick, 1 7 is a single to center field. Two on, one out for Kessinger. 54, center B. And Wes Parker with two outs. That's a mistake right there. Off the Kilkenny card, that is a three run homer. Don't like to see that if you're a Kilkenny fan. Ken McMullen, 312, lines out. 3 0. Here's Bob Berta, the first baseman, 312, second. Ed Charles, 55, second. Tommy Harper, 57 Ks. All right, Ken Henderson, 3-9. It's a base hit. Bob Oliver, 64, catcher's card. Freehand is a two behind the plate. No pass ball. Joe Rudy, 58, double one of three, single. Off the Kilkenny again. Runners on the corner is Mitterwald. Another walk. That's another on base off the Kilkenny card. It's not... Uh, not boating well for that guy. Al Weiss, 65, second X. Could use some help from McAuliffe here. And he gets it. An ending inning double play from off McAuliffe. Thank you, Dick. For that nice play in the field. McAuliffe's also trying to get into the league. And he's up. So let's take a look at this card. He, the turner of that double play. Um, <clears throat> there was a mixed era of Detroit players. And Lou Whitaker, their fabulous second baseman of the early 80s, um, was playing second base with Alan Tremel, and so McAuliffe had been blocked from getting into that Detroit lineup. But now he's free. The space is open up, and they'll go from one great left-handed hitting second baseman to another in Detroit. So here is McAuliffe, 42, flies it into right. Oliver's a 3-9 e in right field, and he makes the grab. Bobby Tolan, 69, is a single. For Gosey, 610. Catcher's card. Mitterwald is a 3 7. The pass ball with two outs, runner in scoring position for Yastrzemski. That's a base hit in the center field. Tolan's got some wheels. Henderson's got an arm. Let's see what happens. 1 to 17, he scores. Yaz is on with two outs. Willie Smith. Pitcher X, E12 for, and that is an error. We have two on, two outs for William Freehand, 38, short. We have the fifth, Rich Rennick, 48, walk. A lot of on bases off the Kilkenny card. Kessinger, 58, double one of three, single. They're just denting this thing. Runners on the corners for Wes Parker. 2-6, a base hit in the left field. That will score a run. Kessinger. 15 to go to third. Against the plus one arm of Harper, he'll do it. 16 to go to third, he does. Runners on the corners. Kilkenny really struggling today in the start. M McMullen, 2-9. Left B question mark. We could tag up here. Kessinger, 15, 16, 17 against the Harper arm again, and he scores. So Don Kessinger uses his legs to go from first and third on a single and score on a sack fly in the inning. And it's 5-1. to one. Ken Henderson, 47, another walk off the Kilkenny card. It's been a disaster today for this guy. Bob Oliver, 2-4, 5-4-3 four, four, double play. So you're, what you can kind of see is a reason why the card had been overlooked um, for the past four drafts is that the walks and the homers um, were all have all been hit off the Kilkenny card on 5-5, 4-7, 4-8, 5-8, and 5-10, just denting those numbers. And it's 5-1. Bob Berta, 57 is a K. Ed Charles, 111, short. And Tommy Harper, 56, left. We'll go to 6 of a 5-1 game. Joe Rudy, 34, pops out. Mitterwald, 411, first X. This is Berta's a 3-8. And he makes the play. And Al Weiss, 68, a single off the Gilkenny card. Rennick, 42, first. 
So through six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Nice, put thirteen men on base in six innings. And it's but it's five one. They're within a grand slam. Dick McAuliffe, two seven, double one single. Bobby Tolan, sixty nine, single to center. And here they here comes Rhode Island. Jim Fragosi, three ten, left. Yastrzemski, one ten, is a walk. They are loaded. Willie Smith, grand slam will tie it here. The pitch to Willie Smith, 2-7 is a K. And with two outs, let's look at Bill Freehand. Here's Freehand. He's already in the summer league, so again, a lot of these guys are just um, getting extra batting prep, extra spring training time today. 4-6 off the Coleman card is a K. He strands those runners. It remains 5-1. to one. We'll give Kilkenny his seventh breaking inning, and that'll do it. Kessinger, 1-8 left. Parker, 47, walks off the Kilkenny car. McMullen, 59. Now here you, here you go, Homer 1-3 fly ball. Oh, but he hits it. <laughs> so we've had two of these in this game. I believe uh, Henderson rolled it there and flew out. Homer 1-3 fly ball and he gets it. It's just been the uh, worst case scenario start for this Kilkenny guy. Ken Anderson, 110. Single and a one. Doesn't get that one. And with two outs, Bob Oliver, 46. Is a K barely. So interestingly, he's a starter seven. So he doesn't break quite yet, and he gets that K. But he'll leave after seven rather lousy frames. In a 7 1 game, Seattle's trying to get a win in the series. Uh, Bob Berta, 2 9. Walk. Ed Charles, 56. Flies the left. Tommy Harper, 57 is a K. And Dick McAuliffe, 65, flies the right. Our seventh inning, bottom of the stretch time music we've been listening to is the balancing act. Three squares and a roof, LP, from 87, a Canadian band. It's a pretty cool record if you have a chance to find this one. All right, let's get back to the game. Top of the eighth inning, with Kilkenny out of there. We'll go Frank Lindsay in the eighth. They have a bad bullpen. They've been relying on some steady young pitching to get them to that gaudy eight and one record. So here is um, Joe Rudy old bat here, pops a short. Mitterwald, 66 Ks. And with two outs, it's Al Weiss, 412 pitcher. All right, Joe Colin, he's just gonna keep pitching. Tolan, 4-10. It is gone. Off the off of the Coleman card, and it's 7-2. Fergosi, 2-8 short. Yastrzemski, 2-4 short. And with two outs, Willie Smith, 5-10, short X again. This is Kessinger, 2-21 is short, and he makes the play. 7-2, Seidel seems to have this one in the bag. Rick Rennick. 1-7 is a single. Kessinger, 1-8 is a walk. Parker, 1-11, third B. Runners on the corners for McMullen. Ending, inning, double play. 7-2. Coleman wants the CG. He's going to stay out there. He's the ace of the team. And the final start of this particular round. So he'll get his full nine innings. Bill Freehand, 49. That's a triple. Off the pitcher's card. Berta pops out. Ed Charles, 5'10", short X. Now that'll be a single off the Kessinger glove. So, we've seen a couple singles off this glove, I believe. Anyway, that was, might have been the last game you have a hit. Anyway, uh, runner at first, one out, Tommy Harper, 53, center X. But Henderson's a good one. He's a 2 10 in center field. Yes. And he gives up a single. So some surprisingly bad defense by some good defensive players. And now they're making this thing interesting. We got runners on the corners, one out in the bottom of the ninth, and Joe Coleman is just now broken. And oh boy. I'm almost thinking you leave him in here broken. I have so little faith in Bill Lee and Well Lindy McDaniel's not bad. Let's bring in Lindy McDaniel. He only has to get two outs. We're gonna skip Bill Lee, he's pretty bad. And go right to Lindy McDaniel to close it out. 
in the ninth, trying to get the final couple outs with runners on the corners. Actually, Tommy Harper runs the second, make it second and third with one out. And it's Dick McAuliffe with two on. Two eight, there's a walk, McAuliffe, an on base machine. And you got the bases loaded, and a grand slam ties this thing. <laughs> and here's Bobby Tolan with the bases loaded and one out in the bottom of the ninth. 67 off McDaniels, a K. But that's all right. The MVP of this tournament thus far has been Jim Fergosi, and he's up with the bases loaded. We'll get his batting average at the end of this game. Anyway, the bases are loaded with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. And the pitch to Fergosi. 48 off McDaniel's card is going to be single one to 15. Is the single to continue the game. <laughs> and oh, by the way, some guy named Carl Yastrzemski and his 40 home runs are at the plate. Screw the Grand Slam tie in the game. How about the Grand Slam win in the game? Bases loaded in a 7-4 game. Yastrzemski, McDaniel. Here is the pitch. 53 off McDaniel is right X. Who's out in right field? It's Bob Oliver. He's a 3-E9, a 3. And that is a single dot dot off the glove of Bob Oliver. And you're wondering why Rhode Island has only lost once in the tournament. They have the tie run at third in the bottom of the ninth with Willie Smith up. In a 7-6 game, runners on the corners, winning runs at first now. Willie Smith is the batter and the pitch. 5-10 off the McDaniel card. Homer 1-8 double, and there it is. <laughs> a remarkable comeback by the one-loss Rhode Island team. A stunning seven-run comeback in the bottom of the ninth. A lot of that's off the pitcher's card. But in any event... He only got one out. This whole inning was set up by a single off of a two at short, Kessinger. A single off a two in the outfield, it was Henderson. Fergosi gets a hit off of McDaniel's card. Yaz gets a hit off an outfielder. And then Willie Smith gets the home walk off off McDaniel's card. So that is a remarkable bit of luck right there. And just like that, this series is over with. Seattle was expected, or SeaTac, I should say, was expected to advance, or to the next game at least. But no, they're toast. After a ninth inning collapse, let's do the box. Make way for Rhode Island, folks. The Ridgebacks. <laughs> if you caught the pun there, it's Rhodesian. But, I mean, with all the, you know, you got your Huskies and your Bulldogs and your, you know, all these other dog mascots, it's time for the Ridgeback to be a mascot. And so, L Frank Lindsay gets the win, bailing out Kilkenny. Uh, gives him up a hit, a walk, and a K in a couple innings. Kilkenny gave up nine hits in the seven runs. One, two, three, four. They're all earned. Walked six and struck out three. McDaniel gets the loss. Comes in and gave up all of this nonsense. He gave up three hits, four runs, a walk, and a K. Yep, one, two, three, yep, all of that. And then everything else was Coleman, who actually gave up ten hits, five runs, three in the ninth. And then, um, excuse me, four in the ninth, or no, three in the ninth, and then a, a run here, and then a run there. This one, that's an earned one. That's earned. That's earned too. So all five are earned. He walks two and strikes out, strikes out six. One double oh nine oh one oh eight and two thirds nine thirteen seven ten seven four three seven. Wow. Holy. Break up Rhode Island, the smallest state has the best spring training team. At least in 1969 in the winter baseball classic they do. So SeaTac is toast. They'll exit the tournament with a six and eight record. But let's first talk about Rhode Island, what they are up to thus far. 
All right, your number one seed Rhode Island Dynasty team is nine and one. Um, they are hitting 316 as a squad. <laughs> uh, 401 ERA. Uh, Fergosi now leads the club in hits with 19. He is currently hitting 487. He's 19 for 39, hitting 487. And uh, yeah, and then the SeaTac team that's just been eliminated. Unfortunately for them, they exit the tournament six and eight, hitting they hit 231 and a, a, a her, horrific 648 team ERA. That ninth inning you just saw didn't help that a whole lot. And then when we look at our year to day tournament, our batting average probably has gone up close to 255 now, is what I'm guessing. 252. 388 team ERA. This is through 92 tournament games. And when we go over to the uh, bracket results, again, I have a lot of, if you see extra num information here, it's because I write on top of these templates every year. So let, this is last year's information. So I'm going to put the result of that series right there. 2 0 Rhode Island makes them 9 and 1. And 6 and 6 Seattle ended up. Um, six and eight. So in the next round, yeah, these guys will just continue with a nine and one record. And, and their opponent is to be determined. Well, that's it for that. We'll do a SeaTac elimination video at the end of this. Hope you're enjoying the winter baseball classic. We'll see you next time. Okay, here is eliminating uh, Seattle's players. You see we got a little bit of sunlight peeking in today uh, on the cards as uh, spring is in the air, getting closer. Um, Clay Dalrymple, left-handed hitting catcher. I guess I'll put it like that. Um, well, you you got your left-handed hitting catcher with power, but you don't have the arm you, you would prefer. Um, and... Don't like that number one fly ball to rest. I don't mind that he's a one-way player, but the one-way isn't really that great. But left-handed catchers always seem to get taken in the draft, so 238 and 100 at-bats. One of a, a bunch of left-handed catchers the Orioles had during this era, you had Clay Dalrymple, you had Elrod Hendricks, you had Johnny Oates. Interesting. All right, Lee May, outfielder, corner guy, has the power, no defense at all. Left-hander, again, I don't mind the lack of hits over here if it means it's all, you know, that 9% actually helps them because it means this side's a lot better. And uh, and that's not bad. Uh, the homer triple-double is good. He's starting to run out of hits a little bit, though. This is like a 273 hitter. 277. I think the problem he may run into is that defense. But otherwise, um, he is a good platoon kind of player with that bat and extra base hits. Don't like the double plays either. 14 runners, nice. All right, Joe Morgan's already in the summer league. I'll have to consider him. Rick Rennick. Well, the infield outfit option is at least nice. Nothing else in the way of defense or running or anything like that. It's just power. And. Um, it's just a real dull sort of power card. It's got some versatility to it, but uh, 245, he's just a guy. He's just another guy competing for a spot. Nothing special there. Kessinger's already in the league. Wes Parker's already in the league. We talked about McMullen in one of the previous videos. This guy is not in the league yet, and he is going to get into it. It's about time. McMullen had been blocked by better third baseman. Now those third basemen have gone on to retire or whatever, and now McMullen's time to shine is now. Uh, this is a good card, actually. Uh, 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 630, 630 plate appearances, and um, the 19 homers, the 272 average, and he's a 314. Dedicated third baseman. That's he doesn't move around. So uh, and I like the walks. Yeah. So it had been an oversight, pretty much, that he hadn't been in the league to this point. His production will start to tail off. This might be his best year within this sample of 1969 to 72. Henderson's already in the league with a better card. 
Bob Oliver, same thing, in the league, better card. Joe Rudy, in the league, much better card. This is pretty awful. Mitterwald, and I'm actually kind of confused. I'm not sure if he's in the league or not. Would be with the Twins or the Cubs? I can't recall. The Twins. I'm not sure. Anyway, this is an interesting card. He's got the minus one arm. He's got the power both ways. I don't care about the strikeouts. It means he's not hitting into a double play. And he has some walks on 9 and 10 with his 2-2 card. Um, plenty of power against lefties on base. Batting average isn't there. Because he's got a minus one arm, you'd expect him to get into the league in a platoon. He's a 257 hitter. I think he'll probably make it. But there could very well be the case, because I'm, I'm not exactly sure. He could already be in the league, and I'm forgetting that. Or he could have a better year coming up. But uh, he's a, he will be playing in this era. Al Weiss, a two at all infield positions. So that's definite. Um, he's, he's, he's your prototypical 20th player on a 20-man team. Um, backing up everywhere. A C and a B are okay. Speed, he's a 15 runner. Uh, with a stick, there's nothing there at all. Um, well, slightly better against lefties, I, I would suppose. Interestingly, he is a switch hitter. Um, Strat made him right-handed, but he was a switch hitter in 69, so I put it in pencil there to remind myself. And that switch hitting ability is real, really important here. That could be the difference of getting into the league and out of the league, because he'll be competing with other switch hitters, of which there are fewer. So he could end up getting into the league because of the great defense at three different spots. 215. He might be one of the worst hitters to get into the league, but it doesn't mean a lot when you bring so much flexibility to a team. Now let's get to the pitchers. Lindy McDaniel's already in the league, as is Joe Coleman. Justy, I think his... I want to say his... Wait a minute. No, I think... I'm getting my leagues confused a little bit. He's still with the Cardinals here. Right, his Pirates card's already in the league, in the Fall League. So, yeah, Justy, just getting started and still a starter. Um, that's just pretty cool because we know he'll eventually transition to a very good reliever. Uh, starter 7's nice, and of course, really 4's nice. Against... Righties, there really is nothing special going on, but as a right, he's a little bit better against lefties without giving up home runs. Single one to seven. 360 ERA. I think this guy gets in the league. Plus, you know, if you get this guy in the league, once his contract's up, there'll probably be another card for him in the future that you can make him as a keeper versus a, like a one, well, one and done guy. Howie Reed's already in the league. And. He's pretty mediocre. He's worse here than the card it's in the league with. Lombard's card. This card got beat up in this little tournament. And uh, he, I don't think he's in, even in the league yet. Uh, with the Red Sox here. Billy Wynn. Now the White Sox have a couple pitchers like this. Starter Sevens. Um, Paul Edmondson's on one of the other ones. And this guy's not bad either. As a Starter Seven. A little bit too many homers against lefties for my taste. But, he's got a 405 ERA. I like the starter seven. I think a number four starter would be good for a team that doesn't have a good bullpen to get that so your bullpen doesn't have to come in in the fifth or sixth inning. Um, yeah, he's right on that line. If he was left-handed, he'd be in the league. Um, yeah, he's right on the line. I think he gets in, though. Dave Baldwin, you know, I always look for, like, when I see a really bad card, I look, try and find the silver lining. And this guy is, a, is your righty who gets righties out, but that's not the hard thing. That's not hard, that hard to do. Most righties are expected to get righties out. It's a relief three, no homers there, single one to seven there. That's all great and wonderful, but this is would be unprecedentedly bad uh, on base percentage uh, for the Summer League. Um... 403 ERA is generous. He put them on and uh, left them on the bases, apparently. So, Bill Lee. Okay, I'm um, not sure when his time is. It's not quite ready yet. He's the space kid, not the spaceman yet. He's too young here, and he's in the bullpen, and he puts a ton of guys on base. So this car won't make it, of course. 
but we might see Bill Lee in 70, 71, or 72, in one of those years, get into the Boston rotation. And back to Dalrymple. That concludes it for SeaTax evaluation. We now are more than halfway done the tournament. We only have seven teams left. Hope you're enjoying it. We'll see you next time.